Hello and welcome to Vancouver Carpenter. Today I'm going to teach you how to coat a corner bead with a hawk and a trowel. And this is just going to be a simple tutorial just for one stand up corner bead. First you're going to want to get a couple of scoops onto your hawk. I just like to use my six inch knife. So this mud is actually a tiny bit runnier than I would usually use but it's what I've got for this video. Okay, so let's go over the basic passes that we're gonna do on the corner bead. So when you're coating your corner bead with a trowel, what I'm usually doing is when I load, I arc off the bead like this. And I do that for a reason, is to keep the nose of the bead full. So first, let's get into where to place the mud on the blade. So when I do this, it's not always directly in the middle. In fact, I'm going to place it a little bit closer to this end. I'm gonna start right here like this, and I'm going to be pushing the mud over. So, because I'm demonstrating, it wasn't a very good one, but let's do that a little quicker. I'm gonna do that again, right here. And then I'm gonna go right down from the top, just place kind of in the middle, arcing down. And it's a little empty right here, so I'll just take a little bit and put it there. So now I've got this loaded. The next thing I'm going to do is a feathering pass real quick. So I'm pressing really hard against right here, and I'm not taking any of this stuff out. What I'm doing is I'm just feathering this edge. And you can see it's leaving a lift off right here. So if that is too challenging for you at first, what you can also do is just use a six inch knife and you can feather that edge just like so. And then for first coat on corner bead, you really only want one or two more passes max because we're trying to leave this bead full. So one, two. And I've left this bead pretty full, so take a look at that. There's a little bit of room, but it's pretty good. I'm gonna do the top. One, I've got a line right here. Two. So I can live with that. I've got one lift off right here. So next, I'm gonna go to this side. Sometimes I clean off the bead right in the middle of coats, sometimes I don't. Okay, so let's watch that again. mud. So I actually forgot why I like to do it this way. Oh, I should have taped that. Oh, well, we'll get to that. But why I like to arc in this direction. Here is actually the most important reason why. So let's find out what happens if I go straight down or if I even accidentally arc this way as I'm applying the mud. Look at this. Like, what am I gonna do with that? Well, I gotta pass down here again to fix it. But that is why you arc slightly this way when you're loading the bead. Because that way, you're only just getting this tiny little bit on the bead instead of that massive mess that's gonna wreck your work. Need a little bit more here. Feather. I definitely should have taped that. We'll be okay. So that's looking pretty nice now except for the fact that I didn't tape this. Well, my conscience has gotten the best of me, you guys. Let's fix that. Get out the taping mud. So excited to make this video for you guys that I just spaced that I hadn't actually taped this place yet. taping it like a 
slow poke hand taper because I'm panicking to do the right thing in this video. Whereas this isn't my preferred method for taping a place. Not, neither is this. I'm just in the mood to do this. Just throw all the rules out the back. Okay. There, I can sleep at night now. This has now had time to dry. It's time to give it a quick scrape. I'm not gonna worry about sanding because it's on here pretty smooth. So. So now it's basically the same thing. I'm gonna get my mud tidy and I'm gonna get basically you know, a pretty wide trowel swath here. And I'm just gonna go up like so, and I'm gonna try and make sure that it goes just past this line that I left on my last coat. And this side, of course, is bubbling like crazy because this side's on a painted wall. So I think what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna skim this tight first. And now I'm going to coat it again. Let's see if that makes any difference. It's important to go down as close as you can get to the floor without making a mess. And to also make sure that you don't leave a big blob at the bottom. We call those baseboards. You don't need to be adding baseboards for the trim guys. So feather my edge and now I'm using a lighter touch because I'm going to give it a few passes until it's just right and I don't want to hollow it out. What I'm trying to do is just get rid of any pock marks and inconsistencies while still leaving a decent amount of mud on here. Oh, well, got a hitchhiker in the mud. So that's looking pretty good now. So now we're gonna do the same thing coming down. Just load it on real quick. Get a tight skim on there. Gonna mess it. Now let's get a finished coat on here. So I'm really going a full trowel width here, unlike the last time where I tried to keep it a bit smaller. Feather my edge. And now pass over it lightly until it looks good. Okay, just this edge needs a bit. happy with that. Let's go to the other fresh drywall side. That side will be a lot easier. So if you take a look, there's a little bit of crumblies because I wasn't arcing quite as much on this coat. I was just kind of keeping it nice and straight, but that's okay because I can just clean them up on this coat. So I'm actually going to go off the nose a little bit quickly. So what I did on that pass was it was actually just slightly like that. And what that's done is left more material in the back. So I'm going to quickly feather my edge now. One pass and that's looking good. Same thing. So those are really quite easy compared to the painted side. Clean off my edge. Little booger up there. Not anymore. 
Okay, so what about this flat now? Because I'm not just going to wait for this corner bead to dry before I can actually coat this flat. So how I like to do these, I like to do the corner beads first. You can see I've left my lift off right here and I like to work into the flat. Pardon me, into the corner bead. And I stop right about there. So I've gone into the corner bead about two inches. I'm now going to feather my edge and I sort of swoop down like that while lifting my trowel up so to not dig into here. Same thing this way. So it's still looking a little bit messy right here. And now I'm going to do one pass and I'm going to lift up right before I get into the bulk of the corner bead mud. So I'm pretty happy with that. This just needs a little bit. Now the one problem here is that this was my second coat and that this one was my first coat. So this would actually look a lot better if this had been first coated first. But I was just in a rush to get you guys a corner bead video and not thinking about the rest of the job. So that is how I like to coat my corner beads with a hawk and a trowel. I hope it helps clarify things. One of these days we're going to make a more complicated corner bead coating video. But for now I wanted one that just covered the real basics of coating corner beads. And a stand up bead is perfect for that. So. Thanks for watching Vancouver Carpenter. I hope you found this one useful. I know a lot of you are thinking, is this Vancouver Carpenter or Vancouver Drywall? But the carpentry is coming. Because I'm actually a ticketed carpenter and I do a lot of carpentry, I didn't want to start a channel called just Vancouver Drywall because that would be one dimensional. I wouldn't be able to do that. But so far I've been making so many drywall videos because they're quick and easy to film and I just seem to always have the time to film whenever I'm at this stage of the job. But Vancouver Carpenter, coming soon. Thanks for watching.